AMD Developer Inside Track is here with Elsie Waller to talk about processor topology. Elsie, can you introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Elsie Wallach and I'm a fellow with the products division at AMD. I'm with the software team and I've been there for 14 years. I've focused on a variety of different products across AMD, all in the area of system software. Um, some areas have included virtualization. Most recently, my area has been focused on operating system architecture and processor topology. So is processor topology something that uh, developers need to know about? No, developers don't need to know it, but it would sure help if their applications were designed so that they could scale with, with um, the processors of today and the processors of tomorrow. Processors today usually have more than one core available. And with that said, that's today. In the future, they're going to get even more complex. So these developers that are doing parallel code, um, you know, does, do all developers need to do parallelized code? Or, and how do they go about finding out about their processor architecture? No, not all developers need to do pro parallelized code. Um, if you use a parallelized environment, that will go a great way towards helping your applications get parallelized. Now, if you're an operating system developer, there's more information available at the, at the lowest level of the processor. Uh, for example, if you're an operating system developer or a system software developer, you can use what's called a CQID instruction to get more information directly from the processor about what's in it. So what is a CQID instruction? A CQID instruction is an instruction that the processor can execute and when you call the CQID instruction, it'll tell you something about the processor. It's in all modern, gener modern generation processors. This instruction will tell you information about the topology of the processor, it'll tell you how many cores, it'll tell you the brand name, it'll tell you whether it's an authentic AMD, um, and information like that. It'll tell you how much cache is in, in your processor too, for example. So, can you walk us through the major parts of the processor topology? Sure. Processors these days have at least one processor core. Um, if they're real simple ones, they'll only have one core, but they'll always have one or more layers of caching that helps processors uh, fetch data from memory faster by caching the data that they use more often. Um, and um, they'll also have a, a floating point unit. So today's processors um, our current generation, what we, what we like to call our family 10 processors, if you're looking at our registered data sheets, if you're one of our, our programmers, um, our family 10 generation of processors um, have a quad-core type design, and uh, they'll have a, a shared L3 that's available across all the cores. And um, using the CPUID instruction, um, you can get that level of information for the processors. Now our next generation of processors um, is going to get even more interesting. Our next generation of processors is going to introduce what we're calling the bulldozer module. And this bulldozer module um, has, some, has some additional sharing in order to make certain workloads more efficient. And uh, it's be very useful for uh, system software specifically and some applications to also know about this type of topology in order to um, more efficiently uh, schedule more efficient and make things more efficient uh, for power as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, just before you came by, I drew us a picture on the whiteboard of a bulldozer module. Bulldozer module is the basic element inside of our bulldozer processors, our future bulldozer processors. Inside of the bulldozer module are all of the elements that are necessary in order to schedule code on these processors. Um, and uh, we tell you a lot about what's in these processors through CPUID. So in the bulldozer module, um, the code is scheduled by the fetch and decoder through to one of these schedulers. The bulldozer module has dedicated integer cores for parallel threads. There is a large 256-bit wide 
um, floating point unit with a very flexible floating point scheduler that can um, partition this floating point unit to be to be used either dedicated towards a in, towards a core or it can be put together so it can be utilized by entirely by one core. And so it's very flexible that way. Now the cache architecture is one of the areas where our bulldozer module has really um, evolved since our last generation. The bulldozer module has dedicated L1 data caches represented here and it has a shared L1 instruction cache which you can see that goes across the entire module and it has a shared L2 cache, level 2 cache that goes across the, the entire module. The L2 cache does contain both instructions and data. Um, now that's the module. The module is basically two cores and all these elements. So the L3 is shared across this or other bulldozer modules inside of the processor. So how does this bulldozer module differ from what we have today in the market? The bulldozer module, um, it, it differs quite a bit actually. In today's processors, we have a very different caching architecture. You see here for each core, from the Magni core, we would have dedicated L1 data cache, we would have a dedicated L1 instruction cache, and we would have a dedicated L2 cache. So the cache topology is changing quite a bit with the bulldozer. And because it's changing quite a bit, it's going to be very important for that information to be able to be uh, deciphered or, or, or figured out by the software and know um, specifically what cores are sharing what levels of caches. So to that extent, what we're doing is we're going to be describing all this information inside of the CPUID instruction. So when software calls the CPUID instruction, it's going gonna, it's gonna to know that these two particular cores share an L1 instruction cache. It can also find out that these same cores also share the L2 instruction cache. And to the extent that there's a lot more other cores out on the system over here, it will also know that all those cores share the L3 cache. So I'm going to introduce now two new terms that we're using for processor topology. One is compute unit and the other is a node. So inside of a bulldozer module, we're going to call that a compute unit. And in this compute unit, we're going to tell you what an identifier for this particular compute unit inside of that processor package. Um, we're going to give you this information inside of CPU ID. The second piece of information that CPUID is going to give you in the processor topology is about the node. Um, you're going to be given a node ID that's going to uniquely identify what node your processor is on. Um, and within the bulldozer processor, you'll find that there are two nodes inside of, inside of each processor's package. So what should developers do to make sure that their software is running efficiently? Well, in the first order, most software developers should just make sure that they're using a, a good development environment that's suited for what they need to do. The second thing a developer should do is make sure that they're running an operating system or runtime libraries that are well suited for the newer processor generations. By the time you can purchase one of these processors, your software will be able to use a runtime environment or operating system that is well suited for figuring out the topology of your processor and efficiently running your code on it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Elsie, for taking the time to walk us through the bulldozer module and give us the reasons why processor topology is important. Um, you can find more information about um, processor topology on developer.amd.com.